My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit, as we go into your word, the Holy Bible, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. I feel led by God to do this particular Bible study with a certain sister in mind who's dealing with the hardship of some decisions she made in her life. And the Lord brought this particular Bible study to my mind to encourage this sister and any sisters in that situation where you're raising children by yourself and you don't have the means to raise them. This sister I'm talking about is living in a, shelter right now. She has two small kids and it's very difficult. When I look at all the suffering that's going on in the world and, and it really hurts me, it bothers me. So I know the one thing I can do is pray for them. I give what I can give, which I don't have much to give, but I do give what I can to give the widows and the fatherless because that's what the Lord says in his word. He says in James chapter 1, verse 27, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. Don't just come around when everything is going just fine. Don't be no fair weather friend. Show up during the difficult times to come and to encourage and even lend help. Don't think just to come and see them is enough. No, you help any way you can help the widows and the fatherless. And the rest of the verse says, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So you got to maintain your walk as well as a man of God. Because a lot of times you could go to help a sister who's a widow and her fatherless children with good intentions. But if you don't watch yourself, it ends up being something else. Next thing you know, you're forming some relationship that you shouldn't have formed with them and you end up fornicating and committing adultery. That's why the Bible says pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So you got to watch yourself to make sure you don't fall into sin or that good that you intended to do for that widow and fatherless child turns into something that it shouldn't be. Okay, I'm talking about our father in heaven today. And the reason why is because our father in heaven is a father of the fatherless and a judge of widows. He really cares about his children, but especially women who have children and the spouse is dead or not around doing what they're supposed to do. 
God has a special love for them. And this message is to encourage sisters and women who are in that situation. And it's of the utmost importance that you understand this because the enemy wants you to think that you're all alone, that you're all by yourself, you have no help. And that's not true. In Psalm 68, verse 5, the Bible calls God a father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. He is very much so concerned. So you need to understand that you are not alone, my sister. God is on the throne and he loves you and he's going to help you if you belong to him. Very important. In the Old Testament, God made it a law among his people Israel not to afflict any widow or fatherless child. And if they did, there was going to be some severe consequences. Exodus 22, the Lord said to Israel, you shall not afflict any widow. You will not mistreat any widow. A widow is a woman who lost her husband. Or fatherless child. So you bet not mistreat them. 20, 23. If you afflict them in any wise or any way, he means, and they cry it all to me, I will surely hear their cry. 24. And my wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with your sword and your wives shall be widows and your children fatherless. That's how God feels about his daughters who are widowed and have fatherless children. He said, nobody better afflict them. So the Lord put this upon my heart to encourage a certain sister I know right now who's going through difficult times and trying to raise her two small children and not really getting any help from the father of that child. Understand that God is concerned and you just need to call out to him. This particular sister has a child in the school system and the child is only five years old and the child probably has some issues but they suspend the child supposedly for acting out to me, I've never heard of such a thing in my entire life that a school system would literally suspend a five-year-old child. I mean, there's nobody on your staff that can handle a five-year-old child. You don't suspend the five-year-old child. You put the five-year-old child on a timeout. That's what you do with a five-year-old child. So I see a lot of stuff that just doesn't feel right and it doesn't look right because it's not right. I believe it's a lot of racism involved because the sister I'm talking about is a black woman and the child is a black girl. And they go into the school out here where they don't live in the area because of their situation. They're in a shelter right now. And it's like they're being mistreated. And it really disturbs me and it bothers me. And I feel led by God to do this video specifically to encourage my sister that God's on her side. And if she is a servant of God, God's going to make a way. And I know she's a believer because she said so. So this is why I'm doing this video for her and women like her and children like her child. The Lord has promised all of his children all that have been enlightened through his spirit, all that believe on him. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's a promise from almighty God, Jehovah, the creator of heaven and earth and everything on this planet. He says to his people, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Verse six, so that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do to me. 
So this sister and I believe that trying to force her child to receive some label and put her in some category that she probably doesn't belong in. Well, I told my sister, you have a right not to sign off on anything that they're trying to get you to sign off on if you don't feel it's legitimate. But now I'm saying to you, you need to take it to the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, the one true God, Jehovah God, and his son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. That's the only true God, the God of the Bible, the God of our spiritual forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you need to put it before God. I will pray for you as well, but you as the mom need to do that and ask God for help. Ask God to judge those who are up to no good. Ask God to show you those who are good and mean the child good and open doors as only he can. See, I'm just a man. I'm just a servant of the Most High God. And what I can do is very limited to what your Father in Heaven can do. <coughs> Excuse me. Psalms 55, verse 22. The sweet psalmist wrote, Cast your burden upon the Lord. Cast your burden upon Jehovah God. When you see his name in the King James Version, in caps, his name Jehovah was originally there. Cast your burdens upon Jehovah and he shall sustain you. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. If you are one of his children, he is on your side. And if these people have conspired against you and your child to do her harm by laboring her and forcing her into some special class thing, you ask God to intervene and to help you. He can and he will if you are one of his children and you have allowed me to know that you do believe in God, that he is your God. The Lord listens to the prayers of his children and he helps them. The sweet psalmist wrote in Psalms 34 verse six, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. I can, I can intercede for you, sister, but when you talk directly to God about the situation, it's so much better. So that's why I felt led by God to shoot this Bible study. So you can see that you need to talk to your father in heaven. He is our father. Our true father, the one who made us all. And when you constantly pray to God, you're communicating with him. You're dwelling with him in the secret place through prayer. And God will come closer to you as you draw closer to him. And he'll do great things for you. Psalms 91, starting at verse 1. He or she that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, or I will say of Jehovah, he is my refuge, my place of safety, and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. 3. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler, the trap of the fowler. The fowler was the one who put out little traps to catch birds. And from the noisome pestilence, he will deliver you even from things we cannot see coming, like diseases floating around in the air. Verse four, he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings, shall you trust his truth shall be your shield and your buckler. Verse five, you shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. 
That's five, verse six, nor the pestilent, that's the disease that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. Seven, a thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. That's the type of protection our father in heaven provides for his children. He says in verse eight, only with your eyes will you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Verse nine, because you have made the Lord, you have made Jehovah, which is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation. See the blessing that comes when you spend time communing with your heavenly father. He says in verse 10, there shall no evil before you. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. He says in verse 11, for he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. 12, they shall bear you up in their hands lest you dash your foot against the stone. 13, you shall tread upon the lion and the adder. The adder is a poisonous snake. The young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet. 14, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. Or in your case, because you, my sister, have set your love upon God, he will deliver you. And I will set her on high because she has known my name. 15, he or she shall call upon me and I will answer him or her Jehovah promises. I will be with him or her in trouble. I will deliver him or her and honor him or her. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. The Lord is no respect of persons. If you're coming to God, your father in heaven, our father in heaven, he will not turn you away. 16, with long life will I satisfy him or her and show him or her my salvation. That's a promise from almighty God. And then in closing, you need to understand that as a Christian, you truly are a child of God. The spirit of God is in you, allowing you to know that. Romans 8, 14 to 16. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And that was 14, Romans 8, 14. This is 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba, which means father. Abba or father. 16, the spirit, that's God's Holy Spirit, itself bears witness with our spirit. That's the intellect of our soul that we are the children of God. So my sisters who are out there by yourself with these children, know that your heavenly father has a special love for you and there's help for you. Teach your children that their true father is in heaven. Teach them to rely on their true father because he is the great provider and the savior of the world. I hope and pray that this little Bible study finds you in peace and blesses you tremendously. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com, download the PayPal app. It's free. Then you would use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app. My code is K 
cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelle. For Zelle, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. And if you don't have a phone, you can email me, Porter at gmail.com. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And please take the time to put something in the comment section.